Right, okay, so I've, I've I actually dried that with a hairdryer, so we're all we're all dry and we're now ready to transfer some of the details from the window and the door onto our painting. Um, you might remember the last time I used this uh, Sorrel transfer paper, I used an A4 sheet. It also comes in long rolls, um, I think they're about 12 foot long, are they not 12 foot? Yeah, um, by about 12, exactly 12 inches um, wide. So it's just going to make my life slightly easier. Of course you can use the A4, do your window, then move it along, do your door. But I happen to have this, so I'm going to use it. Now because our uh, picture is hinged, we know that it's going to go right back over uh, the right places for us. So what I need to do now is draw out the detail that's on this door. I suspect the white's probably going to need a couple of coats to cover that uh, blue. That is our background. Um, there's a bit of jiggery pokery going on there, I'm not sure what. Then there's this door grill. At this stage, we only really need the outlines because it's the blue that we're, we're going to be doing, and the hinges. Now I simplified my hinge um, on my picture. I made it fairly square. It had a round end, but I made it fairly square because it was just, it was too detailed for a hinge. It was just silly. But feel free, you know, if you've got loads of time and you want to put the details in, that's great. It's your painting, you're going to, you know, be looking at it. And this I just put in as white before. Um, some sort of hasp with a padlock, I think. Um, but I just made it sort of more like a just a door opener. Um, and then the same with your with your window. Either these people are away away at work or something, or holiday. Although, why would you need to take a holiday if you lived in a house like this in Bodrum in Turkey? Well. I guess you'd take a holiday when it's blinking peak holiday season because you're fed up looking at tourists. Probably. Now that is straight down here, so we might use an aid, like a ruler, for example. And the same thing here with the hinges. Make them as detailed as you feel you want to. Take your time doing this, you'd be glad that you've taken your time when it actually comes to painting them and you've got a really good road map of where you're, where you're going. So the only other things are there's a black line down there, which we need to uh, to put in because it's kind of between the this post here, which the door is hinged onto. Uh, anything else? Well, there's a black line down here too, actually. And this down at the bottom is quite ratty, but we'll we'll look at the reference when we're doing that. And is there anything on here that we need to pay attention to? Well, there's a thin black line there. And also on the other side. So I think... I think that's pretty much everything that we need. 
at this stage. Marvellous. Look how bang on that was. It's such a good idea to use that masking tape as a hinge. It really um, makes, just facilitates things, let's say. So I can pop that away. I'm going to paint the door in primary blue, which if you remember was one of the colours in, in, in our background. So it's the same family of colours. So it's, there's no, no need to introduce another, another colour at this stage. It's just not necessary. So I'm going to use my three quarter inch angle shader. But I don't know where it is. Um, there's one there. That'll do nicely. So it's just uh, my regular De La Roni System 3 angle shader. This one is, I think it's 3 8. 3 8. Looks more than that, doesn't it? Half inch, I would say. Maybe. This one's been around the block a bit, to be honest. Not the, not the best one. Um, now this primary blue is incredibly transparent so if you want to use um, ultramarine that's fine you'll probably get there a bit quicker than me actually what I've decided to do looking at that I'm going to mix some white through it so it's not quite so transparent otherwise I think we will be battling it for a long time so I'm not going to mix too much white through it but enough just to, um, to lose that real translucency that it's got. I'll just mix that up with, um, with my palette knife. If you're going to have a front door, have a front door this colour. How gorgeous is that? That is lovely. So let's start again then. Yeah, that's lovely. And it's because our ground's not a million miles away. It's going to help us quite a lot, I think. Try not to paint over that the black line. Um, but, you know, I, I can because I can come in again and just reinstate where it is. It will be easier all round. So that's got some lines on this door as well that are um, planks. Be careful when you're at the bottom um, because it's it's sort of rotted. You you can go all over it because the black will cover up the bad. You know, we'll put black on to, for the rotten bits, and it will cover up this colour. But if you just Miss, it out, miss bits out on the bottom, it'll just make it easier when we come to do that. Some bits go right down and most of it doesn't. Now an angle shader was made to do this. This is its express purpose in life. So if you can't get a square edge with a flat, get yourself an angle shader. They're, they're just really, really, really useful brushes. They are my workhorse brushes. I use them pretty much all the time. And because of that, they don't last me that long. Um, I mean, they are De La Roni, so they're not, I don't mean to speak ill of De, De La Roni, but they're not the best quality. Um, but I love them. They work for me perfectly. I, I love the um, the spring of the bristles. 
There's everything about them. It just works for me. That's not to say that it'll work for you. I'm just telling you what I find um, is helpful for me. And, you know, they are made for acry acrylics. The De La Roni System 3, which is De La Roni's uh, acrylic paint set. So, you know, they used to work with acrylics. And they do just make going around corners just easy, so easy, much easier. And it's, they're really good to get a straight edge with. You got the idea, I really like them. <laughs> it, it's hard getting brushes that you like, actually. Getting brushes that feel really good in your hand and that you know what they're going to do. And um, you, know, you go through a lot of brushes before you actually get to that stage where you can really depend on your brush. So that's that one left, that little vacant part there for the uh, white. It's like a black piece of metal banding would be my guess. What do I know about making doors? But that's my guess. Would it be right, Mr. Fixit? That the white around the top is some sort of metal banding? Yes. Yeah. All the planks together. Yeah. So try and avoid the hinges if you can, because they're going to be white. So the least colour we have under them, the easier it will be for us to paint them white. Just a sliver of that down here, all the way to the left of the hinges. Let's put that in first, just easier. And it, you know, it, I'm just going on and on about this, it's just getting ridiculous now, but with an angle shader and drawing a straight line is, is easy. Hold your brush up with paint and just put your, the toe part, the pointy part down and just and just get straight lines. It's just easy. It's a good idea if you're not familiar with your brushes. Um, you know, some of you might have different brushes. I know somebody uh, the other day told me they'd bought a Grainer, G-R-A-I-N-E-R, -E a Grainer brush. Never heard of it before. Never come across it, never heard of it. But what it looked like was a flat that had had thinning scissors taken to it. So I'm guessing that it's brilliant for grass. But if you've got a brush like that and you're not sure what it does, what it's supposed to do or what it can do for you in your paintings, then just get a bit of paper out, acrylic paper, and uh, just try it, you know, try it flat, try it on its edge, try all sorts of things, see what it can do for you. Because actually, you know, what it, what it can do for other people, you might find another use for it. And brushes are too expensive to just have sitting in a tub looking pretty, although they do look pretty in a tub. 
I'm going to say that. Any art supplies are, are nice to look at. I've got my all in it in behind me here. But if they were out as ornaments, I wouldn't I wouldn't be offended, no. They're lovely. Well, I kind of liked this house before, but with a, a turquoisey tealy front door, it's kind of gone up even more in my estimations. I guess you could say it's a kind of sky blue, really. It's probably sky blue if you live in Bodrum. If you live here, our sky's a bit sort of grey. Nothing exciting. So as I say, just leave the bottom part of the door a bit higgledy piggledy. Is, is that a word you have in, in America? Higgledy piggledy. It means. I think you have a word, certainly in Texas, it's a word, is it catty wampus, something like that, that means higgledy piggledy. So that might mean something to you. <laughs> So try and stay straight down that white uh, edge piece. And I've forgotten to transfer this bit on, so I'll do it a bit on the fly. I've got the paint on my brush. If you're not happy drawing this uh, line down here, if you don't feel confident enough to draw it, to paint it in, don't, don't fret about it. Just get some of that masking tape that I showed you before, frog tape. Put it down each side of, of the white bar and then just paint white into that. Um, and then when, you, when you've done that and you come to do the blue, just put a piece of paper over there, like on the edge, and then you'll get a straight, it'll be straight. So there's no need to worry if you don't feel confident in drawing a straight line, painting a straight line, I should say. But I will say, get yourself an angle shader, then you can't go wrong. I should be on blinking money what do you call it when you advertising stuff commission. commission thank you yeah i should be on commission but i'm not i can tell you i'm not it's just a bit fat that's all right then we've got the this round bit to deal with at the top This is very good practice for you, really is. Just take it steady, small pieces at a time. Make sure that you've got enough paint on your brush. Um, it's, it's very easy to think that the less paint you have, the more control you'll have. But it doesn't kind of work that way, really. You need a fair bit of paint on. 
and then it makes the brush glide, which makes the job easier. in progress. The other thing to remember is that you know move the move the canvas. We all we all have a bias one way or the other um, to tip the canvas to get straight lines. You know, it's not something to be ashamed of. Everybody does it. The only people possibly who don't do it are people who paint on enormous, enormous canvases. And then it's just totally impractical. I mean, how can you move those around? So I don't know if they've just learnt how to, I guess they've just learnt how to paint straight on. But I don't, I use, uh, I turn my canvas quite a lot, as you will have noticed. Canvases tend to use it on an easel. Yeah. Not flat. No, painting flats um, not the norm. I mean, we pay, we paint flat largely because it's much easier for the camera. It's a whole new complication if you um, need to rig rig a camera up for an easel, isn't it, Mister Fix? It. It is because you can't see through your head. Despite the fact there's nothing there. You must get one of those endoscope type cameras and feed it through your ears to the other side. <laughs> yeah, you could try that. You could try that. See how far you get. So just about there, I think. I don't think this is going to need another coat, actually. I might have got it in one. I mean, it's aided enormously by the fact it had that um, ground on it. Yeah, the only bit that looks slightly strange is this bit here where we started off with the primary blue uh, on it, just on its own. Now, frankly, I'm not concerned about that. I quite like that. And on the one that I did, I actually put signs of, of wear and tear on my doll. Just down here, um, I'm going you know, to leave that bit down there because it's perfectly understandable that that bit would be worn a little bit round the windows there. So I'll just... Um, just let that dry a tiny bit and then we'll come in and we'll put, put black on um, and the white and whatever. I just can't do it yet because it's just a bit too dry so we'll take a pause there. So I've just been waiting for this to dry and I've had a look at it and I just think it's too uh, washed out. It's too azure. I really liked um, I mean, that's the reference, it's a mid-blue. And then when I did mine, I did it darker. And I, I actually really like that. So I'm gonna stick to that and use ultramarine blue over the top of that. It's not for naught, however, because we leave certain parts of it, um, certain parts of this color coming through so it looks like it's worn, weathered. So, okay. So 
So I'm getting to know this door quite intimately. Having painted it several times. Well, I mean, that's what happens with acrylics. You paint the, you have to block it in with something. And now what we've done is we've put a, a, a background in for this colour, for the, for the ultramarine. So if, I wouldn't miss out any steps if I were you. Let's add a little bit of blue retarder um, to my ultramarine. It's just a little bit on this tacky step side today. That's very nice. This um, transparency of the ultramarine is actually giving us some really nice marks on this door. Once we've got this in, we need to go over with the white for the for the hinges and um, the that grill. to leave some areas that look a bit worn. I'm sorry, what? We may just use some kitchen towel to remove some paint if you need it. Yeah. Give that washed out look. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Because it's probably going to be your conversation. Oh, right. Oh, sorry, I'd forgotten. I'd moved on in my head. So let's put this bit in and then I'll go and do what Mr. Fixit suggests. Move a bit of paint around.
Right, so I'd like to move some paint from there. So Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? That's delicious. Here, if it's still damp enough, yeah, just about. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I might end up doing more of this. I really like that. Do you like that, Mister? Fix it. Shall I, shall I just carry on? I just really like that. You have to do it when it's still damp. I know that's why I'm trying hard now to. Why you're suggesting that you may do some as you go? Yes, I see. I don't really get what you were saying at the time. I've moved on in my head. Well, this is a Bob Ross happy accident. I don't want to get a little bit carried away. It looks really nice. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it just? It's gorgeous. Oh, let's go painting with water. None of this would work with kitchen towel, actually. You probably need the rough texture. Yeah, I think you do. Texture yeah. The cloth. Yeah. Oh, this is just wonderful. I like painting with water, I like it. Fantastic. Do you bring my drink over, please? The excitement of all of this has made me thirsty. Thank you. Just pop it there. Top. That's great. Just gonna find a clean bit of my towel because I don't want to be putting the glue back. Back on it. Ooh, doesn't that look nice? Wow. A whole new genre is born. Because these bits are the bits that I did earliest, so they've been the most resistant, but that's all right. That's really nice. It looks much better in real life, doesn't it? Right, okay, let's go about, oh, oh no, a little bit there that needs a bit of watering, but more to business. Right, okay then, let's proceed. Actually got a fair bit of water in here now because it was all up in my brush. Recap as, as you go along properly. No. More water. A little different effect. I'm not saying it's not a nice effect, it's just different. I 
somewhere around the top part because <coughs> it's almost like it does it best when it's just beginning to dry. This might need to remain fairly solid ultramarine, I think, maybe. Right, let's get water paint in there. It's lifted loads off. I don't know if that's too much really. I mean, is there anything that she had to do brush with since she was using yeah. a separate brush for water and green? Is there any reason for doing that? Just to ignore me. Well, you're the inventor of the thing, so. I'll just try and dab that off with what it's got on. Yeah, I think that's I think that's all right. Phew me. You never would have known. Whites on and the, the vines for the planks. I think it's still, it's still in. So this has just gone a bit off uh, here. It seems to be a bit wider. Let's have a come up from there. Just make it. A little bit fatter. Let's have a go on. I don't know why it's got um, knocked off kilter. Just, you know, millimeter if you do it, millimeter once and a millimeter the next time. And before you know it, you're uh, a bit off. Just thicken that up a bit. That's fine. That's much better. Oops. More pleasing to my eye. Go up there straight. And back down. There we are. This bit filled in. And we'll give it the water treatment. So I'll go onto the top of that.
because I've got this half done, I'm going to give it the water treatment. Hopefully it will work on this side. Hopefully it will work as nice as it did on the door. Okay. So he's quite right, I should have another brush, but that's going to have to go into water anyway, so. So let's just do it. Still trying to avoid the hinges if I can. That's lovely, I'll put that down there. Right, so back on the ultramarine. I think the same rules apply, even with this wonderful technique, we've still got to give respect to the bits that we want to come back and paint in white, um, because otherwise we're just making our, our life more difficult really, and I'm all for not doing that. painting in the white bit. Okay, let's go water painting. Because technically it's water unpainted. Oh yeah. Just gives the most gorgeous distressed appearance. Okay, well, how do you like them apples, as they say? It, it, it doesn't look that great on, on uh, the monitor, but I can tell you it really is going to look great. It really is. Right, so the next thing we need to do is dry that and uh, start on the, the white. So I'll just pause there for a moment while I uh, dry. <laughs> 